Comfey might be one of the most slept on Pokemon right now. It's got base 100 speed along with 82 special attack and decent special bulk at 110. But where its true power lies is in its unique ability triage. This makes healing moves have priority. This pairs extremely nicely with the move Draining Kiss, which is a 50 power fairy move that heals up to 75% of the damage dealt. We can boost up the flowers with Calm Mind, and this thing has higher priority than Extreme Speed, which is wild. Even Dragonite cannot escape the speedy Kiss of Death. After a few Calm Minds, we can take advantage of Stored Power, which is a psychic move that gets plus 20 power for each stat boost, and this little devil is a massive threat that demands respect. All right, look, everybody's gangster until the flower necklace comes out, and this thing is honestly super underrated right now, which I feel like is probably gonna change soon. It is always my goal to just mess around with some weird Pokemon, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you won't regret it, and let's go ahead and get into the match. All right, so today's battle is honestly, it's just a really good match. It stressed me the hell out, which means, you know, it's gonna be a good one. So. My opponent decides to lead off with the Mandibuzz. I'm going to toss out the Excadrill, and I figure I could set up some Stealth Rock. I know this thing is probably, you know, physically defensive here also, you know, for the Defog, but I'd like to learn a little bit about what this thing wants to do, so I am just going to go directly for that Stealth Rock, as the Mandibuzz is going to go for the knockoff. Gets rid of my Rocky Helmet, but not before it gets poked a little bit, and they do have to take, you know, a tiny bit of chip damage. So at this point, I'm figuring, you know, Foul Play is probably their best offensive option here. I'm going to end up going for the Rapid Spin. Now, the reason is, if I can get the plus one with Excadrill, I'm actually going to be faster than a lot of their team. And I do threaten a lot of their team with the Excadrill. Now, unfortunately, they are also rocking the Rocky Helmet. So we take some damage there, puts us below half as they just blow away my Stealth Rock that I worked so hard to set up there with the Defog. So at this point, I'm kind of in a bad spot here. Now, I'm going to try an Iron Head just to scout for damage. If I can grab a flinch and potentially a two-hit KO, I, I'm sitting pretty nice. However, this thing reveals itself to be just literally max defense and likely HP and even goes for the Roost. So I'm over here just touching his helmet for no reason. And I decide to switch out because Rotom Heat is a nice switch in here and Excadrill could come in handy later. So... I bring in the old Easy Bake Oven, and I do have a great matchup against the Mandibuzz. However, their defensive core is kind of putting me in a little bit of a weird spot here because they do have in the back the Clod Sire, who is likely specially defensive, can obviously come in on a Volt Switch here. So I decided to just go for the Will O Wisp, as of course the Mandibuzz did in fact go for another Roost, sitting at full HP like the asshole that that thing is. Uh, but I do get the prediction correct, as they are going to end up bringing in uh, the Clod Sire here, and I hit it with a Will O Wisp, where. It's not super important because it's not going to be able to do much offensively anyway. However, this now at least is going to slowly chip this thing down. And it also is going to allow certain Pokemon to be able to kind of take super effective attacks. Potentially, like the Meganium, not having to worry about like a Poison Jab. Now at this point, you know, Clodsire doesn't have a lot of options that it can click against the Rotom. Obviously, can't really Earthquake me here. It's unlikely they go for something like the Poison Jab, and they probably just set up the Stealth Rock here. So, I can freely go into the Flygon, and I actually, I see a decent opening for Flygon to honestly become quite the problem for them here. So, they do set up the Stealth Rock, and the door is open for Flygon to try to do some Flygon shit. So, I'm working with a Dragon Dance set here, and while their defensive option against Flygon is going to obviously be the Mandibuzz, I actually also have coverage with my Terra. So, first of all, I'm going to end up going for the Dragon Dance, and I know that I can get at least one of them for free. Now, the reason is because if I'm this Clod Sire, I either click Yawn or I click Toxic against the Flygon. But I'm actually working with the Lumberry, so regardless of which status they decide to go for, we are going to be able to get rid of it as they do, in fact, click the Toxic. And that is actually perfect, playing into the plan exactly how we need it here. And with our base 100 speed after a Dragon Dance. I'm actually faster than pretty much everything at this point, and now with the Lumberry taking care of the poison, we're not only at full HP, but also at that plus one attack and speed. So, obviously Clod Sire could potentially be working with the Unaware ability, but, you know, with the Stab Earthquake coverage, it's not going to enjoy that at all. But also, I figured, you know what, I'm gonna go for a second Dragon Dance here. There's really no reason not to, and I do need all the offensive power that I can get. Uh, to be able to take care of things like that Mandibuzz. So, they actually just stay in, they go for a second Toxic here. They're like, okay, you ain't got a Lumberry this time, bitch, and I, I do not. Sadly, we already had our lunch out here, and we are going to, the, the poison's gonna stick. But, it's not actually the end of the world, it's gonna be a couple turns before that starts to kind of take uh, a huge effect on the Flygon. But with two Dragon Dances, I'm feeling pretty confident that I can do some good damage and start to break the team a little bit here. So, 
Now I'm just gonna end up going for the Earthquake. I don't want the Toxic to stack up super badly for a potential you know, priority in the back. And I know that's an Earthquake, especially at plus two, is gonna take care of the Cloud Sire. So they obviously don't have anything that really wants to switch into this unless they go Mandibuzz, but they decide to let the Cloud Sire just, uh, just go down as they already set up this Stealth Rock. It's burnt and just kind of hindered at this point. So I was actually, I'm banking on this switch in because with two Dragon Dances, I, I'm in a decent spot to, to check this thing nicely. So, this thing comes in, it doesn't take Stealth Rock because, of course, it did defog that earlier. But I've got this thing right where I want him. Because I can go for that Terra Electric. And the Terra Electric Flygon is going to be put in a spot where obviously nothing's super effective uh, against me. But I also now have the very hard-hitting Terra Blast uh, against this thing. And it's time to see just how defensive uh, this asshole man to buzz is going to be. We put the light bulb on our head. I can then go for that Terra Blast specifically for things like Corviknight defensive flyers like the man to buzz. And Terra Blast unfortunately does not quite knock this thing out, which tells me this thing is literally a plus defense nature at Impish with max HP and defense. So it's literally the exact trump card that plays against the flag on there. And unfortunately, a foul play does knock me out because my attack stat was going crazy. So... That is mostly unfortunate because I likely, I could have just gone for a third Dragon Dance to guarantee that I could pretty much sweep the entire team, but also because I burnt my Terra there. So, a little bit of a misplay, but it is what it is, and we're going to crawl our way back here as I can bring in the Rotom. They no longer have the defensive switch in to a Volt Switch, so I can freely click that. That is going to take care of the Mandibuzz, and we tr basically we just trade Mandibuzz for the Flygon, and at least I was also able to take care you know, of that Cloud Sire. So we're still in a pretty decent position here, and we still have our Flower Necklace in the back, where I'm starting to find that if I can chip a few things here, we can get ourselves in a spot where Comfey can, can kind of go crazy. So I decide to go into the Meganium on the free switch, just because I kind of want to see, you know, what their answer is to this thing. I'm fully defensive, and I should be able to at least, you know, get some stuff going, you know, before uh, having to make a switch here. So they end up going into the Cyclozar on the matchup here. Baikal comes in looking fast as hell, and if there's anything I know for certain, this thing is going to click the Shed Tail. It's exactly what these things just always end up doing. It basically takes half of its HP to go for that substitute and then pass it to whatever they like. And I figure, you know what, if you're going to go for a substitute, I'm going to go for a substitute of my own if we're playing the old, the old Beanie Baby game. So they actually end up Shed Tailing into Torterra, which is an extremely frightening sight to see because Torterra behind a substitute basically means that this thing can freely start to set up with the, its newly acquired Shell Smash. And this is a scary ass turtle. But we have a couple of... It actually looks hilarious with the matchup on substitute against substitute. So I'm actually relatively safe for now as they are going to at least have to attack me. And that's going to put me in a spot where at least I can break this thing substitute. So they do go for the Shell Smash there. Um, and obviously they drop their defenses at the cost of raising their attack and speed sharply. And uh, again, Torterra, very scary. Here's an interesting fact. We also noticed that the it does not activate the White Herb item to bring its defenses back to normal. So that actually tells me a little bit about what this thing is working with. And that means its item is likely going to be uh, the loaded dice here rather than, you know, the White Herb to bring the defenses back, which is actually good because, you know, now I know with the priority that I have in the back with things like Mock Punch, I, I likely should be able to take care of this before shit gets too bloody. So I double check and ensure that this thing's defenses are in fact down. And I'm just going to go for the body press once again here as I was able to break the substitute. So I'm still behind a sub of my own, which actually puts me at a little bit of an upper hand because they still do have to attack me. And that means that I can get a little bit of chip on them, you know, before I go down. So they actually end up committing the Steel Terra here. Goes for the Iron Head, which uh, is actually surprising to see the Steel Terra because I've revealed the body press already. Um, the obviously crazy ass damage from Shell Smash plus uh, the now Stab Iron Head does take care of the sub. I can now sit on him and unfortunately it's not quite going to be able to knock this thing out. So... Uh, the Steel Terra, the, the old axe on top of the tree ready to chop that shit down, actually ends up helping me out a little bit here. And I find myself in a spot where I'm debating on whether or not I want to conserve the Meganium. I actually decide, since Excadrill is chipped down to this point, I'm not going to be faster than a lot of the threats left on their team. Or actually, any of them, unless I get a Rapid Spin off. So I'm actually just going to end up going into the Excadrill and sack this thing off, which is then going to allow me to switch into whatever I like. Now... I have a couple of different options against the Torterra, but first, it's time to play a little bit of Whack-A-Mole here. I bring this thing in, basically just as Death Fodder. Um, they end up going for the Rock Blast this turn, so it does reveal, yeah, it's going to be the Loaded Dice. And this dude is just straight up throwing hella rocks 
at me, which actually surprisingly enough, it is gonna be able to get the five hits and we do actually live it with six HP. Now, not like it really matters because with the shell smash, this thing's speed being doubled, it is gonna be faster than my base 85 or something, whatever ass, and it is gonna finish me off with that bullet seed. So hits me once with the bullet seed, but this puts me in a spot where now I do have a couple of options to try to get something going. Now, looking at the remaining Pokemon on their team, I know that some scary things like they have the, the walking wake back there, which is what I'm super worried about. So in order to try to combat that along with things like the flutter main, I'm actually gonna end up going in and it is flower power time out here. We are going to bring in the Comfey, and this thing is an absolutely sleeper Pokemon just by looking at him. Not that much of a threat. Also, you know, slower than Torterra at this point. However, you are not faster than these kisses, boy. I can outspeed with the Drain Kiss because we have the insane priority. And with the defense drop, even with your Steel Terra, that is going to be able to take care of the Torterra there. So that is super clutch. Their Terra is also gone. So, you know, no more type change and shenanigans in the back. And now my main priority in this match is going to try to get the, the late game absolute demolition with the Comfey. So... They decide to go into this Cyclozar. This thing comes in. They're probably going to just go for another Shed Tail here. And I'm considering, you know, without any Calm Mines, do I want to go for the Draining Kiss? I end up going for the Calm Mine. Now, the reason is if I can boost my special attack and my special defense, I know that I should be able to take, you know, at least one attack from the big threats they have in the back. So I know that they go for the Shed Tail. They're going to end up passing that over to Fluttermane. And... If Fluttermane's ass wasn't scary enough behind a substitute, again, yeah, it's very scary now. It actually also activates its protosynthesis with the booster energy. Uh, luckily for us, though, they're actually just going to get the speed boost. And that's actually, that's super important because the speed does not matter against Comfey over here. We're just, we're going to be faster than everything with our Draining Kiss anyway. And now with the plus one special defense, I'm feeling confident that I can take a Moonblast here. I'm considering going for the Draining Kiss. However, I opt for a second Calm Mind. So obviously... This Fluttermane is fast as hell. It is able to outspeed, go for that Moonblast, and it is going to do a nice chunk of damage, of course. However, I now go for a second Calm Mind, and sitting at plus two special defense and special attack, uh, I'm feeling like my win condition is maybe going to be able to pay off against some crazy Pokemon here. So, uh, I now go for the Draining Kiss. I can have that priority, and even though we smooch uh, the Substitute, not only are we going to break it, but we're also going to be able to get some health back just to... Guarantee that we can safely take another Moonblast here. So, we break the sub, we grab some health back here, and thankfully since we get that sweet Nectar out of them, even with the Life Orb chip, we are, should be able to at least take another Moonblast, which we do. And, unfortunately, they actually get a special attack drop, which was kind of one of the things that I was extremely worried about here. But, we've come this far, and I still have plus one special attack. So, I go for another Draining Kiss here, being able to grab that priority. Puts us at around half HP, and judging by the amount that the Moonblast did last time, we are just barely able to live it with 18. So, they don't get another special attack drop, which is amazing, but at this point, all I can do is just spam some kisses out here. I go for another Draining Kiss. Uh, we put this thing in range for another one to knock it out. And after the Life Orb recoil, it is looking real close on whether or not this Moonblast kills. They go for it, and we actually live with the 11 HP, which is literally insane. But we get another special attack drop, which is just some young bullshit. But now, luckily, since I had two combines up, that just brings us back to neutral. And I can finish it off with one more Draining Kiss. So sometimes you just got to kiss the, the Flutter Main three times, take care of it. And that is arguably the biggest threat out of the way. Now... Of course, we do take some Life Orb recoil there, knocks us down to just a few HP. So we got out of that matchup with just the skin of our flowers at this point, and now all they can really do is go into one of their two dragons. They decide to go into the Cyclozar. I don't care how fast you are, you're not faster than these kisses. How many times do I have to teach you this damn lesson, old man? I go for that draining kiss. Uh, not only does it just straight up knock it out, even uh, just with neutral, or, like special attack, but also gets us nearly back to full HP. And their final Pokemon has to come out here, which is going to be uh, the Walking Wake. So, with its plus two special defense, I can take pretty much any attack from this thing after I Draining Kiss and get it back to full. Plus, I do have some threats to clean up in the back. However, they are too afraid of the flower. They want nothing to do with the Comfey, and we have now scarred this trainer for life with the potential of the priority Draining Kisses uh, paired with Calm Mind, and that was kind of just a hilarious match, being able to kind of turn things around with a, a very unexpected Pokemon. So listen, if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. I do appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.